before we get too juicy here and caught up with each other, uh, because as you know, if you've listened to us here and I do not live in the same city, so we don't get to see each other no. as often as we'd like. So this is almost like a catch up time for us too. But before we catch up um, with each other, we'll talk about our guests today, guests today on the show. Um, so I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Brigel? I would say Brigel or Brigel. I think it's Brigel. Brigel sounds natural off the tongue. So let's go with Brigel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they are a Latin pop duo, a couple uh, that currently live in New York City. I don't think they're both originally from New York. Um, I could be wrong. Um, Brianne and Miguel, and they are going to pop on to our show uh, fairly soon. I know it's going to be like three hours ahead for them. So bless their hearts for popping in at like nine (laughs) o'clock PM in New York there. Um, And they are, I want to say, I want to say advocates. You know what? Sometimes I just don't want to do our guests an injustice by not getting it this proper or correct. So I'm going to actually read their bio. That's Mm -hmm. so, you know, unprofessional, but just because they're, they do so many interesting things. So they're on a mission. I like, I just love this sentence. They're on a mission to harmonize, of course, with music. I love that to harmonize humanity through their work Mm -hmm. in music and film. So, um, First of all, what what really caught the attention of us was the fact that they both are grandchildren, I f- believe specifically of Auschwitz uh, survivors, Holocaust oh, wow. survivors. So, right. um, and as if you follow our podcast, you, you'll know here and I've talked about in the past over quite a few episodes, bringing up how we both are grandchildren of Holocaust survivors. So um you know, quite, it's quite a lot in common with just that one, you know, tidbit of information with uh, these, these two. So um, Mm -hmm. that's one thing. Um, Currently, they're actually fundraising. So what they do is they, I believe with their work, they create music, video content, excuse me, those kinds of things. And they attach a fundraising opportunity to them as a voice for things that they really feel quite passionate about. And so currently for a little while now, it's been um, fundraising for Ukrainian displaced persons uh, finding refuge at the Auschwitz Jewish Center Foundation. Wow. Um, And I believe that's actually in, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but um, in Poland. So wow. yeah, and that's actually just confirm what I just said. Uh, Ukrainian refugees who have found a new home in Poland. So, um, some absolutely gorgeous um, intentions. Holy cow! Holy cow! I I want to. I just want to know everything about this couple. How the heck did they find each other first of all, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then start this embark on this journey together, doing what they're doing, right? Yeah, it's really going to be nice to learn about their journeys and, as you said, what how they got to where they are, but also what they want to continue doing with their future. Because I find that we can chat with people about what they've accomplished and how they got to today and what's next. But what's the thread yeah. that's continuing that into the long distance of their future with their career, but also personal, considering when you blend your career with your own uh, causes, I find that there's a lot of longevity with that, too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and I, and with that being said, um, I believe, oh gosh, is it, is it their agent, whomever we've been in contact with manager management, um, pu- uh, publicist, <laughs> I'm not sure who it was, but this person was saying how, uh, I think, okay, right now we're mid ish to the end of September at the end of this month, they're planning on going to Poland, I think to this particular um, refugee center or area and they're filming and they need to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe, and I'm hesitating here for a sec because I want to get this right. Arnold Schwarzenegger Hmm. is joining them um, in this video. So that's fascinating. Like, I wonder how, how did he get involved? So anyway, just speaking about what you just said, like what they're planning on doing in the future. I mean, that's like, that's the immediate future. That's what's happening in the next few weeks I think um I don't think that's a secret uh wasn't told that that was but we'll 
edit that out if we have to <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> and by we, um, we mean Rachel. I mean, yeah, but we mean me. <laughs> um, so that, that's that's quite the introduction to our guests. Uh, we'll let them introduce themselves. We'll talk uh, in depth about their um, what what they're up to. So with that mm-hmm. being said, um, we'll go back in time a little bit to when I said maybe we would chat a bit about each other just for a couple of minutes before they pop on because it could be any second here. Hero, how are you? <laughs> Well, I've had no complaints. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am doing. That's a great answer. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm um, going to use that next time. Rachel, how are you? Well, I've had no complaints. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I've been praised the entire day, that's, actually. So that's oh, been very. Goodness. That's, it's nice to be appreciated and valued. That's for I'm sure. literally, I'm seriously going to write that down. I like that answer. Okay. Continue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we know that Hero is not an, uh, not a morning person, but for the next week and a bit, I will have to be more of a morning person just for accommodating oh. and getting to and from places. So, mm. but I was surprised that when I got up at 6 a.m. this morning, how I was very alert, you know, at like I'm seven. making this face. If you can't, you got to watch our YouTube channel because that is early for me stupid early for you oh it's wow stupid early and also yeah. especially when I'm like I'm a midday person I sleep yeah. until nine not like yeah. super late but nine yeah, yeah. you know because I for me I think it's linked so deeply psychologically to school based schedules school system schedules as a kid feeling like you have to be up at this time to go to school and then when you're done and so I never and so psychologically I associate getting up early and having to be somewhere by a certain point and kind of rushing in the morning mm-hmm. or going to sleep at a certain time you make sure you have enough hours of sleep to have energy for the next day it's all deeply rooted from childhood and school avoidance and not liking school or work in that sense so when I interesting that you still yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. when I have control over when I go to bed in terms of I don't have to be so cognizant of oh I have to actually get up and know that I have to get my ass going pronto from when my alarm goes off is better for me And I'd Mm -hmm. rather have my day end later and stop knowing that I can still go to sleep at midnight or even like, even if I went to bed at the same time, just to clarify and had an earlier day, I get that, but I'm more productive when I have time in my earlier uh, mid morning and a little bit of time at night, as opposed to being off at like, I don't know, three 34 or five. And especially Mm -hmm. in winter when it's dark out, it's like you're, you're indoors when it's light. And then you're Mm -hmm. out when it's dark. I'd rather Mm -hmm. be, even if it's raining or dark and whatever and gray, I'd rather be available a little bit during my day, get done whatever I need, like my self-care or my breakfast or errands or morning coffee with a friend, and then have a little bit of time later in evening. But then I'm most productive in the late morning, mid to early evening. Well, it really is all about having that um time but before or after before an activity or a you know or like after hello hello how are you good how are you guys very good (laughs) very good hello i literally just made it i our (laughs) boot woke up and i was like of course she gives at 8 52 like they're both asleep we have two little girls they're both asleep yeah and then the baby woke up i was of course she did of course Is she really like in tune with energy or like what's happening? Maybe she's just like, mom's got to, something's happening. Yeah. That's like, of course, tonight, both girls needed me at the same time. So that was, you know. Absolutely. Well, thank you both so much. And speaking of the time, we, we just have to extra, extra thank you for coming on at nine (laughs) o'clock because, you know it's we're very very appreciative and grateful because i know some of our guests um has it's actually been a while since we've talked to someone from like you know england or someone who's eight hours ahead but yeah. three hours is still it's a thing it's still a thing for it's sure so thank you have... it's a pleasure to be here thank you for yes, thank you. of course so how are you two doing how has your day been how's your week been so far it's that's a great question <laughs> has been a little bit of a you know what you know, yeah. like I've been battling the computers for the last week, you know, oh, having really? issues with the hard drive and, you know, but now everything is back to normal. So that's great. Yeah. You know? And is oh, our sound sure. okay, by the way? Is the sound okay this way? It's it's totally fine. I don't, you're not breaking up. I don't hear a lot of crackles. It's all, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. I can hear both of you. It's great. 
So Brianne and Miguel, we, we did, we always kind of jump right in. We're kind of like a two feet in right off yeah. the bat. Don't really um, mess around too much. So we've, we're already recording. Um, yeah, just, but we always like to let people know just in case <laughs> something foul comes out um, or you can leave it in, whatever. Um, and we did just a little intro to you too. And I know you had no idea what we just said about you, but they were all good things. And <laughs> just, you. you know, pretty much but to be honest it was quite like base it on your bio so just the stuff that mm -hmm. we we know when we got from you from the interweb and all those kinds of things so um if you wouldn't mind how would you introduce yourselves to to the people so we're for gal brianne Miguel. we are a artistic duo couple who make music and film with mm -hmm. the goal of harmonizing humanity and making an impact to make the world a better place that's that's our that's mm -hmm. our jam Love it. I love the jam as well. And how did that all begin? I know it's a loaded question, of course, but like, where it's did like, that let's all just jump right in there? Yeah. yeah. Like what, what was the seed of that for both of you? It all began with pain. No, <laughs> you said, it all. You said yeah. pain, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> no, it was jokes aside, a little bit about this whole journey from, you know, darkness to the light. It all started, I mean, we met through work and immediately clicked and I don't know, she kind of was already on a path and she in a way illuminated mine, you know? Oh. So I kind of felt like, okay, this is the person I need to become who I want to be. Mm. And I don't know, it's been just rolling, rolling and now we have two kids and we're married and we're very <laughs> lucky to just we're, work together. You know? Yeah, we're, we're like, we're often mm. together and very <laughs> seldom like apart and if it is it's just for a little bit and we call each other pretty much all the time you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> for those people yeah you're yeah. magnets you're magnets for each other well yeah. that's yeah. like okay so first so what what was the what was the job that you were doing what do you mean meet for meet through work what was the work well i was uh producing a short film and i actually connected with a, a common friend of us he showed me a prior trial of a feature film that she had uh, produced and starred and I was impressed because she's a great actress and I wanted to work with her and so we met we spoke about working together but in the movie there was a sex scene and she told me she didn't do sex scenes so immediately I was like okay I like you you know I think mm. that's a very respectful <laughs> respectable and yep. um yeah she helped me actually she told me to you know it needed a little bit. Yeah. yeah she wanted to change a little bit the the script because it was too male oriented so she helped it to she helped to bring balance into my life, but really into, into a short film also. <laughs> but isn't that isn't that so fascinating cool. though? When you have the balance of energy, forget it, whether it's yin or yang, or if you genderize or not genderize energy, it's just the ability to complement each other and to fill in. And again, energy is fluid, so it's always moving, it's always changing, it's always right. a little dance, and that's this humanity as well. We're never the same each day. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Amen to that. I, you know, and speaking of like fluid and harmony and all, I love how you use the musical terminology of harmonizing, harmonizing what you do with, you know, into film, into um, uh, being advocates and activists and those kinds of things. Um, before I dive, I, I'm, I'm just so, so curious about the commonality that all of us have, which maybe, I don't know if you know about, do you know about the commonality? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so, and that's like, I don't want to, I mean, we can't just dive right into it. I might just kind of pull the cat out of the bag, so to speak, but wow. yeah, right. But cause, well, cause we talk a lot about um, our, sh on our show um, over many episodes here and there about being grandchildren of Holocaust survivors and um, what a, what a, what a, I don't even, I mean, like what a, what a gift, but what a, something that you really can't relate to a lot of people unless they really, really know. I mean, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, it's a niche strange thing, but with what you guys are doing right now with even supporting um, refugees, um, Ukrainian refugees, I mean, it's not really that niche because it's still happening. Like those kinds of things are still happening today. So thank you so much for bringing light to, and you talk about light and darkness, but light to things that are still occurring these days. Um, you know, we pray that it's never as bad as it was, but I mean, Hey, like it's like humans haven't learned like what the heck. Um, mm -hmm. 
So how, it was that something actually I'll, I'll, my initial question, I guess with you, is that something that you knew about each other? Um, both being, well, yeah, only we also, didn't, and but... Miguel's actually also the son of a survivor. So Miguel's father was a Holocaust survivor as well. Wow. So wow. both sides, grandparents and his father was mm -hmm. a survivor. And then in, in my case, my grandparents actually met at Auschwitz. So Whoa. that was a Holy. strange yeah. love story, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Oh my so gosh. We, we didn't know when we started working. I think at some point, not too far, we I found out that you were Jewish. And you know, growing up in Spain, that was never a thing because I was never surrounded by Jewish people, you know, until mm -hmm. I moved to New York and then everybody was Jewish. You know, right. and, and, <laughs> yeah. but, but uh, yeah, no, it wasn't I think until we, we found out that immediately was that it just it made it definitely sense. it definitely I, I'm not gonna say it influenced, but yeah, it felt like the word Bashar, it felt like it was meant to be, you know, and, mm -hmm. and like, mm -hmm. I'm sure that also influenced a lot of our story that we have created, you know, the, the, the relevance of the, of the fact that we come from the same thing and we're, yeah, it, it's a very heavy um, topic. <laughs> Yeah, but what's but what's fascinating though is that even like, taking from your experience, just I started working at, in a new environment, and one of the people that is on my team is also Jewish, and we just found this out today. So when you have something in common, even like that, and then in addition, if you have personal things in common or hobbies in common or other things, it just adds that layer of intimacy because you just oh. know a little bit about your culture, even if you, and especially if you are both with ancestors in the Holocaust mm -hmm. or not, it's just like. And if you have nothing in common, it's just like, okay, you're one of, we're one of each other in some way or form. There's some kind of comfort there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's great it that you found each other. It has become much more of an identity. You know, it wasn't yes. before. Now yeah. I identify, you know, like I'm trying to figure out what am I? And I know that I am where I come from, you know? And that, mm -hmm. so that's very relevant for, for my identity, for our identity, for our kids, our families, you know, it's, uh, yeah, that's who we are. Yeah, for sure. That's interesting because, and you said that that's like more of a recent, um, not discovery, but a recent realization that that's kind of what you uh, want to um, just, I guess, align yourself with, right? right. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting that you say that because I only just recently over the past, I don't know, like a year or two years, I, you know, just certain mental health characteristics or things in myself that I'm just like, wait a second that's not really mine if that makes sense like that's not my why do i still feel like um sort of like there's a tiger behind me or something horrible that's just about to happen i i, I deal with a lot of anxiety and i have my entire life but there yeah. was never really for myself in my own life living through my years that actually happened to me if that makes sense, yeah. like, I don't know where, so I've been diving really deep into, you know, where do these characteristics that I have um, really come from, you know? So that's, a, and I, I, you know, just talking to a lot of people that have um, the, that kind of background with their family, it's such mm. a commonality. So yeah. is it now, is that something that, that you can attest to? Is it something that also? Yeah. And yeah. I think also, <laughs> I think yeah. so much of the generations, like our parents' generation, who are the children of the people that experienced this, it was like right. stiff mm -hmm. upper lip and chin up, and you know all of these oh concepts of like grin and bear it, and it's like there yeah. wasn't so much of the confronting and healing of that trauma. So it just you know continued, and I could even mm -hmm. see it a hundred percent saw and still have aspects of my personality where. It's mm -hmm. exactly what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. uh, where is this coming from? This is not necessarily something that has mm -hmm. any root or grounding. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then also even looking at my father, for example, and like, he's an incredible human being, but I see things where like, I'll give you a perfect example. He made me and my brothers all get a second passport so that we're dual citizens in right. different countries. So I have a European mm -hmm. and I have an American. Right. And mm -hmm. that's so that if anyone ever comes back, like we have mm -hmm. a passport to get out. You know, like wow. things yeah. that you don't even realize are in his mechanism of we, we have to we have to be safe. We have to make sure we're okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and that anxiety and and mm -hmm. trauma of there. Yeah, but in my case, you know, I had a not so great relationship with my father. He passed like ten years ago, mm -hmm. and only now, 
like in the last five, six years, I've been really in touch with my um, culture and I have been able to understand better what he went through, which I didn't when he was alive. You know, mm-hmm. so I didn't, I understand much better now where his pain and his, you know, anger and his uh, cynic, you know, skepticism, everything, where that came from. I had no idea. I just thought he was an angry man, you know, yeah. and then through, you know, learning the history and thinking about what he was been through, it helped me to forgive and to understand much better uh, our relationship, you know, and, and his wow. pain, you know, and, and to not see seeing seeing him more as a victim than you know feeling that I was a victim you know so it, it's yeah it's been always there but wow. without understanding yeah. what it was you know yeah, yeah absolutely well it's, it's interesting because I feel like um uh you know like you were saying Brian like that the generation there the grandparents generation and then our parents and I know uh, Miguel was a bit different for you because it was directly your father but you know even with my father it's like you know he was always told yeah push it away push it away everything's fine everything's fine like don't worry don't worry don't worry right um so they they never learned I I almost feel like it's now in our generation that we're healing doing all Mm -hmm. the not doing all the healing but doing most of the healing for those generations a lot right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, for sure. And to add on to Rachel's part, too, I've seen a lot of um, patterns in my in my mother, actually, that I've been able to call out and say, hey, you know, now that I'm an adult, or now that I'm not like a teenager anymore, I'm able to spot some things that are totally hardwired within you. And it's totally a reflection of, you know, your mom or my grandmother, and those things really don't serve you. And that projection on what you think you're doing. uh, One good example is, I don't know, like, when I was younger, she would say, hey, you know, if you're going out on a date with a guy or whatever, you know, I just make sure that you that I trust him or something like that she trusts him or and I said, well, of course I would or be careful, but it's that sense of like, they're trying to protect you, but they don't necessarily trust your own judgment that they've given you and they're still saying I'm not worried about you but I'm worried about what what's outside of you and I said, sure that's totally fair, but you need to trust in me either to make my own mistakes and maybe have my lack of judgment or to trust you've taught me well enough to know that I'm going to be okay and I'll let you know if I need help. So it could be any scenario, but there is that kind of PTSD of like, Mm. you know, be careful. Are you sure? And you hear it in parents with kids too. They'll be like, be careful or are you sure? And it's like, well, yeah, you're making sure the kid understands not to hurt itself, but that's also making them think in some ways to think that what they're doing might not be okay, or Mm -hmm. there might be a risk involved. And even if there is, let them figure it out as long as it's not taking their life or severely harming them, like let them Mm -hmm. make mistakes. So I think it's one of those things you can't always have your hand held, even though there are times where you definitely should have it held. Yeah. And well, it's interesting because even with our kids, and many times tells us be careful, not be careful, but be aware <laughs> of how we use our words because we use a lot. Be careful, be careful, you know. So instead, yes. it's like take your time, or so we're trying to, know, to be aware of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, move away you from that and... concept of being, you know, of, of being all the time under. And this is like stress. when she's like standing on the couch, you know right. what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> totally. Come on. Please go slowly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 You're gonna fall and hurt yourself, but I know you need to fall and hurt yourself if you're gonna fall and hurt yourself. But at the same time, can we avoid yeah. going to that hospital? It's an interesting exactly. Now, we, yeah. now that we are parents, that's what I love from being a father is that mm-hmm. I understand. I always say that I understand much better humanity now. You know, the lack mm. of love or lack of attention, the pain of most people normally comes from that. You know, mother or father figure. You know, mm-hmm. so that really helped a lot to understand our parents, you know, and their parents and, and yes. humanity at all, you know, mm-hmm. and why. So, okay. So were you always creating with, um, in mind kind of he- healing for lack of better word, healing humanity, or was that, or was it, how, how did you come about kind of wanting to do that? Exactly. I was just going to say it's healing <laughs> ourselves, right? Yes, ah, yeah. It's, yes. It's yeah. Healing yeah. ourselves. And then therefore, wanting to share that because as Miguel started Mm -hmm. off and is very Mm -hmm. accurate we started with the pain we started being Mm -hmm. in really dark places and then having our own transformation to be able to say 
this is an incredible life. We create our lives as far as our responses and our reactions and the energy that we bring to something. And we all always have the option to have those moments of self-awareness, self-reflection, mm -hmm. and how do we choose to then take the next moment and, mm -hmm. and be in life, mm -hmm. yes. um, which doesn't, it's, it's so complicated because <laughs> I don't want to ever take away from someone's pain or, mm -hmm. or misfortune, but yeah. at the end of the day, we always have that path to choose. And then also mm -hmm. it became like, what we can't sing about like my hair, you know, like <laughs> it is gorgeous. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Yeah, a lot of it about like what I'm wearing. Oh, I'm wearing a feathered earring. Okay, cool. You know, like which is cool, also. But yeah. at the same time, like yeah, it had to have that. I, I think that, like some of our projects at the beginning. Well, our first music video, we wanted to represent that. Yeah, that our journeys from dark to the light. In my yeah. case, I was battling with like drug addiction and. Okay. And, and other demons, and in her case, it was a, a how do you say it? Eating disorder, yeah. eating disorder for yeah. nine years. You know, for me, I was thirteen; she was nine years. So we went through yeah. this transformation, and then we were able to find ourselves. And once we found ourselves, we were able to be, especially in my case, I, I became the person I had to be to be with you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I had oh, to that's so cute! I, I couldn't be who I was in order to continue our relationship you know right so oh, wow. yeah it was very necessary to have that transformation and i think it's also as far as humanity at large it's like yeah. so much of what we've learned is it really is individuals and it really is connecting with individuals and that is what humanity is it's, and we are all one so yes if, if we are all one as soon as you heal yourself it kind of heals around you know yes. every, everything around you so one thing I want to add into that, and feel free to answer at your own discretion, we don't have any ulterior motives with any of our guests. So please answer honestly with your own comfort. Uh, for each of you, separate separate answers, what would be three core examples of darkness in your past or even in your present life and three examples of lightness that are in your past or now in your present life? I'm going to let you start. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think a lot of the darkness in the past, it, it, from my experience, was a lot of self-talk that was really negative mm. and therefore obviously emotional atmosphere. And then that would attribute to my physical actions. Mm. And it was a vicious cycle. It would, it, and, and my eating disorder was this very crazy experience of like, actively going to get food with the intention of throwing it up and then the whole like mm -hmm. psychosomatic everything that went with mm -hmm. it of the experience every day I'm not going to do this so, okay maybe just one time and then you're such an idiot you're so this so like it was such I was such a bully to myself mm -hmm. um and as far as now I think if anything it's just darkness I always have, of course, we all have darkness. I think, mm -hmm. I think they're okay. I can, I can share this as a, as a new mother and like mm -hmm. having had that experience also like coping with my different body at this point and like still yeah. mm -hmm. finding ways that that little element of myself may trickle in and I have to be kind to myself and give myself time and be kind to mm -hmm. my body. And as far as light in my life, I mean, I, I have so much light I have my amazing husband we have our daughters we love what we do we're able to create like we have our work but then we also do that for a living like we make documentaries for people we make commercials yeah. and it's mm -hmm. and then we're able to make music for their projects and it's just we're it's living a, the life we dreamt we oh, didn't even know it's, it's a little bit better than what we dreamt because we dreamt something more superfluous you know so mm. this is feels much more meaningful the work mm -hmm. we're doing is much more seems more important or more powerful. You know, it's affecting you know wider. You know, it's spreading better. Yes, and darkness and light. <laughs> um, well, no, I love I and I love the word superfluous. Yeah. Well, in terms of darkness, you know, I have a lot of again. I was mentioning the drug addiction and and hanging and you know I was actually producing other kind of movies when I was in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, let's call them X. You know, and <laughs> that, that was a you know, 
And so I was, I was, produ- I was producing other kind of movies. I wasn't doing what I was meant to be doing. I was a little bit wasting my possibilities because of the circles I was um, surrounded with, mm-hmm. or the people mm-hmm. I was surrounded with. And I was doing it, I think, because I felt like I was not loved enough. In my case, I think by my father. You know, so mm. I always thought that to find love, I had to be the coolest. And to be the coolest, mm. I had to be in the sexual world of this or that. You know, I was, it was a weird universe, you know, where everybody was surrounded and, and shared that common pain and mother or father issues. You know, so yeah. I, there was a lot of pain in those circles that I needed for myself. I would always be partying, but it wasn't partying. It was just escaping of, you know, not confronting your reality not yeah. doing what I thought I should be doing instead just, you know, going with the easy fix, you know? So okay. that was darkness in the past. Darkness in today, it's, you know, trying to control my uh, my stress levels, you know, especially for my wife or for my kids. You yeah. know, I try to be as positive and as, as nice to be around as, you know, as I can. <laughs> but it's a thing that it's always difficult when, because we have so much, we force ourselves to work so much that then mm. we stress out because we are not on the, how do you call it, uh, reaching the, the deadlines, you know, we do, mm. but it's, it's mm-hmm. a lot of stress, you know, self mm-hmm. stress, you know, so then that just creates uh, this anxiety that we were yep. talking about before. So those moments I need to always catch myself and try to come back and be like, okay, I have this amazing life that I created and, and this amazing family and everything that I wanted. And I always have to remind myself that I have that. Not always because it's so evident, but it's there and you have to, you know, mm-hmm. repeat it so you don't get lost. Yes. Right? But that's, that's a lot. That that is, is, yeah. Everything I do, I love. Like, it's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Every day we wake up and we are creative, we write or we edit or we talk about what's the next story or with it. And it's it's like it's very dreamlike, you know, in, in that sense. It's dreamlike, but it's in English instead of being in Spanish. Because right. <laughs> you you probably you do probably dream in Spanish, probably right? Well, do you or is it? I, yes, and I used to be. I've been here for like eleven years, so now it's a mix of it. Yes, yeah, I, I'm, I still translate a lot from Spanish into English. Yes, you know? yeah. yeah. Also, I'll, I'll I'll bring it back to one other thing, which is sure. something you love, and it's like truly and and. Uh, transformation of the concept but we love to not work hard in the sense of like work hard but continuously create and like we find it's our passion so it's not really work but that's something that when we did go to visit Auschwitz and in both of our cases we have grandparents that were at Auschwitz you know our bite mouth fry work makes you free so even in our we didn't even realize that that's something that's been passed down for us in the sense mm. of like, you gotta, you gotta do work. You gotta, you gotta. Yeah. 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 Get that Can't rest. No, working. no rest. No rest. rest. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Interesting. We see it in a really positive way now. And like, I love that that's an mm. aspect and way of being for us. But I also oh. see, because I always grew up and my grandfather and father would say, the harder that you work, the luckier you get. Mm-hmm. And I didn't yeah. make the connection until mm-hmm. we were there in 2017, like 2018, 2017, yeah. we were there. I was like, oh my goodness, mm-hmm. like, wow, that's that. And, and talking about that, so interesting. I, I mentioned that to Brian many times that if it wasn't for the Holocaust, I wouldn't be alive because my I was born well, my mother was born, and that was the second. I think you're gonna explain that much better than I do. That's I know. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Miguel's mother is named after his grandfather's first wife, who she was murdered in, uh, in Auschwitz, and then my grandmother she survived Auschwitz, and and, they there, and therefore she ended up with you know with uh, your grandfather. my grandfather. Yep. And had they not, you know, had she survived, I wouldn't exist in this uh, one. You know, so uh, it's a weird. And, and, but but I love my life so much, wow. and, and it's been it's been intense. You know, life has been interesting, but I love it so much. And I, nothing would be the same if it wasn't because of how it was. You know, and it's a, it's an interesting thing to deal with, to be grateful even for that. You know, it's a right. weird, it's a weird place to be. You know? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I bet. And so adding on to that kind of, I'd like to like layer things in through these calls and responses, but when it comes to, again, the lightness and darkness and ways that you've embraced it, what are some of the ways that you manage your mental and emotional well-being as far as your self-care? So creatively, we know that you love to create and it doesn't feel like work, but I find that even with that said, because I'm preaching to the choir as well, uh, we still have our own ways of self-care that is truly selfish for us, not for others or for family, but like just for us. What are some things that you do apart or together or both? Yeah. And just, and, and also just, sorry, just to add, because that, that's a good question because, you know, both of you are mentioning, you know, things, things are wonderful and they're great, but yeah. Um, you know, Brian, like after you had your children, like you'd kind of noticed, okay, something's seeping back in something is there like so how did you nip that or that's not maybe the best word but how how did you how, how do you navigate how do you navigate that? around that yeah I think there's been many years at least for me of like meditation mm -hmm. breath work pausing giving myself space to sit with it be with it be aware of it like I I love the concept of my monkey mind or whatever you want to call it is my friend Mm -hmm. And therefore we can have a great conversation and embrace it and love it and like shift it in the experience. And, and there's that like double-sided element of it where I recognize that it's happening and it may affect me or trigger me slightly, but then I'm also very aware of, oh, hey, there you are. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I also, as far as like a physical release, I love, I love to dance. So I'll, nice. I'll, dance mm -hmm. meditation I you know I used to every day meditate for 20 days exactly. obviously with a two and a half year old and a six month old I don't have that <laughs> much time like I I meditate when I can breastfeed these days like that's mm -hmm. basically yeah. what I'm meditating. Smart. um but thank you it's it's another friend of mine I think Wayne Dyer also used to say this like if you're stopped at a traffic light you can take a deep breath right of and yep. be with yourself mm -hmm. and relax mm -hmm. In my Absolutely. case, I was going to say marijuana. No, but, uh, <laughs> uh, well, well, no, we live. I'll, I'll you know where we. Well, you know where we live. We live in in British Columbia, Canada. So I don't know if you know. Well, have you, well, well, it's another topic for another time. But anyway, <laughs> definitely that weed helps. But uh, again, creation. The the work we're doing makes us just feel like we want to wake up in the morning and just keep going and give more. You know and. and give back love, you know, to, to the universe because it's so needed, you know? Mm -hmm. So that definitely feels yeah. like when things are bad, you can focus on that because there's a meaning in there, you know? Yeah. Right. And I think something that's really important, I imagine you have this as well together, is like being able to have someone that I can turn and be like, I'm going through this or I'm feeling this or this was a thought that yeah. I had and yeah. be able to voice it without judgment and just talk about it mm. freely you know I think that there's immense power in that mm. because the minute that it's out it dissipates a little bit and you can see it outside yourself and it doesn't take as much of a hold we're very lucky that we have the relation we have because yes as much as existentially we are alone we're born alone we die alone mm -hmm. this is the closest that it feels to not being alone because right. we can always back you know bounce thoughts and feelings and I feel stress, I feel this. And we are very transparent so that immediately helps because it's not just you. You have two brains to help you. you yes. know, it's, it's, it, yeah, we're very lucky in that sense that we have this setup of our relationship that just helps to bring up each other whenever we feel a little bit down. If you are alone and you don't have that, it's very easy to just keep sinking, you know? Mm -hmm. But when you have this, there's no time to sink, you know? Yeah. Okay, then I have to ask this question. Do you ever fight? <laughs> when and when and when you do have a quarrel, because I know that I think it's only healthy, you know, we're going, um, how do you navigate that? Because you are definitely um an anomaly. I don't know if you realize <laughs> that, but like just you no, know, just just because you work together yeah. and you still and you get along and you're so cohesive and you you are each other's person like truly mm -hmm. in that sense of the word it sounds like and I know one other couple like you um actually they're pretty good friends of ours and I just yeah it's it's fascinating and it's it's amazing so when you do have a quarrel what give some advice out there maybe to <laughs> the couples who are no we yeah. used to at the beginning of the relationship we had more of that you know like the, to understand where we were both 
you know, in, in what space we were, but we are very lucky that we constantly agree, you know, like she likes blue and I like red, you know, that's the, that's the name. <laughs> she doesn't eat meat and I love meat because I'm from Spain, you know? Mm-hmm. So those things, <laughs> it's just, you know, but it's, we never have, we don't have like blow up crazy right. fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disagreements. But I think that it's also like, we both know to just have our say, yeah. breathe a little bit and then come back and talk about it again and be like hey do you know you know this is what I was feeling right. or like I'm I, and also apologizing I think mm-hmm. also even mm-hmm. if we do say something or like have a moment that's a little like we always do this you know like or one of us like you know like we'll we'll call each other before it blows up and right yeah in a way that's like you know, and even in those moments when you're like, yeah, I feel that way, you know, then it's like, I remember at the beginning of the of the relationship, Rianne said something about, we can never go to sleep being angry with each other. Yeah. You know? So we yeah. always make sure that whatever it is, we figure it out before the day ends, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that has, that's, that hasn't been a thing because we haven't had time. We're just working and working and working. So <laughs> It's like I want to do something that I'm like, no, no, this is the best edit. And, and she's like, no, this is, you know, we yes. respect each other to a point that is like, okay, let's see yours, let's see mine. Right. And then we can decide, you know? Yes. And, yeah. yeah, I don't know. We, we are, you know, she's very patient. I'm learning, you know, so it's, uh, <laughs> you know. You need one uh, of those for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> And also That's- because she's so great, and I'm not just trying to kiss her ass here, but she forces me <laughs> to be better. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm very aware of that, that I'm, I'm grateful that she makes me be a better version of myself. And for that, I can't be a, an yeah. asshole. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. doesn't, doesn't connect, you know? Yes, of you know? course. Yeah. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. how I make her cry, you know? Instead of- <laughs> Laugh cry. So uh, wait, 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 you make her cry by kissing her ass? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh god oh god i'm just teasing okay just we're teasing. going we're not going that direction we're not going that direction here okay no. it's a good method by the way uh, it's a good- <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah ha- what did you say happy life happy wife or the other way around yeah i think that's a tried and true statement that will never never tire yes yeah. oh my gosh that's so funny Love um it. I kind of want to go backwards, but yet forwards. So backwards, what I mean is that something that you had said previously, but we're going to actually, I want to go forward. This is something that is coming up for you that has something to do with what you mentioned previously. Mm-hmm. Um, so you mentioned Auschwitz and, and both having had visited there. Um, was that your first time there and an only time yeah. there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was like, okay. And that was like 2018 or something you said? Or something, I think it was 18. It, I think it was, it was either 18 or 17. Yeah. 2017. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So my I guess um just Have leading you been in, there? No. And and actually, so my grandparents, um, they they were from Poland. So uh to make a to make a long story short, um my grand my Zadie actually he was trying to flee and then got caught when he was in Russia and was thrown in and in camps there, uh, work camps. And, uh, then, you know, actually met my, my Bubby, which in Russia, when she was also, it was, that was actually as she was fleeing, I I should know the timeline a bit better. Um, but no, I haven't been there. My grandmother's also from Poland. Um, Mm -hmm. but it's just the tragedy is, you know, after the war is as with a lot of uh, people at that time found that none of their family survived right so they were literally uh my my grandmother was the sole survivor um and then my grandfather found out he had a sister that was um that did survive and that was alive and she managed to make her way to to Toronto Canada which is why he came there instead of New York it could have been New York where a lot of Jews did go but it ended up being in Toronto um but no I haven't been in um you know I think like after after all that was said and done, like, I think that if I ever told uh, my Zadie, he's not alive anymore, but that I was going to go back to Poland just to see kind of oh. the root the roots, I think he'd be pretty disappointed at the time. Mm-hmm. Like he was really, 
you know, never, ever, ever, ever go back there. He would talk about stories, but it's like, you don't, don't ever set foot on that land again. Right. So, um, but it's something that I think definitely something I think about. I've been to Israel, um, which was amazing. Um, but with regards to Auschwitz, are you correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're doing right now and with the film that you, or the, the video that you have, uh, with fundraising for Ukraine refugees now, is that because they are refugees living in or having been brought to Poland? And is it to do with the is an Auschwitz Foundation? There? Yeah. So, so maybe, yeah, maybe tell me about that a little bit. So when the war started in, in March, mm-hmm. um, mainly mothers and children and grandmothers, because the men were all uh, by law had to stay in Ukraine mm-hmm. and fight. And that is mm-hmm. apparently, as far as I understand, Still the situation mm-hmm. they started to flee and mm-hmm. Poland and Ukraine are border countries yes and the Jewish Center Foundation is a foundation that's been around since 2000 they're an incredible organization who fights hatred for everyone so they use mm-hmm. the lessons of the Holocaust because they're located two kilometers from Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camps wow. so they're located within a mile and a half, I think, or I don't know the kilometer. I think it's very, it's okay. very close. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're, you're from Canada, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah. um, uh, and they use the lessons to say exactly what we were saying at the beginning of this conversation, right? That yeah. they may be in different forms, but unfortunately there are still ways in which people are being treated poorly and treated yep. unkindly and discriminated mm-hmm. against. And in, in this case, obviously there's an, a war and sometimes the war is not as vocal or apparent as an actual war, right? We, mm-hmm. we all know in our lives, the ways in which we see elements of what happened in the past repeating itself mm-hmm. just in different forms, mm-hmm. unfortunately. So they very quickly set themselves up to bring, they, they have brought some Ukrainian display, they like to be called from my understanding displaced persons not refugees Mm. um thank you thank you for that yeah they have been um providing classes workshops camp for the kids and then of course supplies and food and a space to you know gather and socialize Mm. and i think the idea is it's great to say okay here's all of these things but Mm -hmm. then it's also like people are living there what's their life yeah, mm-hmm. so to wow. give them some element of like, hey, why don't you come take this class? Why don't your kids mm-hmm. come in and have a theater Help workshop? Them to assimilate to the society. Yeah. yeah. To, to be, mm-hmm. I don't, I always say it's like not normal, but you know, I, I can't even imagine. Yeah, if we had to go to Canada, like, and then what? Like, we're just going to sit yeah. and, yeah. you know, yeah, it, yeah. that's not our home. We're not with our families. It's no. not our thing. Mm-hmm. So, they so yes connected um through the organization and, and yeah what and, the work they're doing. and the fact that our family are survivors definitely gives us this feeling of a little bit it's our fight you know like in a way like we we are here because they survived so what's yeah. our purpose here you know we i don't know if we have a purpose but if we do the one that we want to have is to heal what, what was happening you know what happened and try to help everybody yeah. around us you know to try to find a little bit of light because there's so much darkness you know and because mm-hmm. we come from that deep darkness we're, we're trying to just do our part you know and it just feels natural to do that right because we could be working on like a feature film of i don't know write some story about Cool action, some, some funny, story. you know, yeah. You know, <laughs> a rom-com, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah we'll, we'll that, but it feels that we want to show the amazing work that some people are doing just because and we want to inspire other people, motivate other people to do good because we want to do good, you know? And mm-hmm. yeah, that's mm-hmm. what we want to see. So that's what we want to do for, for other people to see. Think, that's yeah. so beautiful. Um and then, but you guys are actually going there soon. Is that correct? So on Friday. Oh my gosh. Whoa, so oh, soon. Wow. Like, that's why when, 
when it was the option of the 20th and 28th, we're like, we'll go, we'll do the 20th because we'll, the, we'll be in mm-hmm. Poland. On wow. The 20th. Oh, and oh how long gosh. will you be in Poland for? Uh, almost two weeks. We'll be there from, we leave Friday and we come back uh, like 10, 10 or 11 days mm-hmm. later. Yeah. Not next week, but the following week. Wow. Yeah. And yes. so, and then is there a project, a, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but there's a project you'll be working on. Yes. So we have a film, it's, it's actually called Alchemizing Auschwitz, and it follows descendants of both sides of the Holocaust coming together to fight hatred. Oh so my gosh, that's amazing. We're making a wow. film with one of our dear friends who our daughters call Uncle Marcus, who is Austrian, whose grandparents were, you know, on the other side, if, if you will. And mm-hmm. we have characters who are also children of both sides. And then we have Tomek and Maciek who run mm-hmm. the Auschwitz Jewish Center Foundation and all the work that they're doing and the incredible humans that they bring. They're kind of like a, a portal or a vortex mm-hmm. for all these amazing human beings who have given their lives to, as Miguel was also mm-hmm. saying, essentially making the world a better place, right? And speaking about these topics and sharing this kind of message of coexistence and love and healing. So. It's incredible. Oh my gosh. I'm kind of almost speechless. Um, I think just because it's, yeah, all of this stuff is just, it's, I've, been, I've just been diving into my history a lot lately and just trying to figure out why, even what Miguel was saying earlier, why am I the way I am, like on a much right. deeper, like genetic blood like you know brain chemistry way right yeah yeah so um it's very fascinating and I will definitely be following your journey I hope other people do as well but that's really cool yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, it's yeah I I got speechless also from all right now (laughs) because I wasn't gonna say I don't even know what I was going to say, but yes, we're very excited to go there. Which is also so strange, right? We're like, we're so excited to go there, you know, like. Which is the, yeah. Yes. Like your grandfather, you know, said, like, don't go back there, you know, and he has a point. But at the same time, it's so complex, the whole thing, when we speak with our friend Marcus or many other millions of cases, probably, that they were caught in the middle of a war where it's like, okay, you either kill his family or, or we kill yours. You know, yep. so it's such a, it, you know, so many people were, you know, decent humans and they were trying, but if you try to hide somebody, then maybe all your family gets murdered. So it's such a twisted reality to be in that we're trying, as I didn't do with my father, we're trying to not judge completely the yep. case because we have, we're not in that position. And it's so, I, even through saying it, I'm like, I hope I don't say anything wrong because it's so, mm-hmm. you know, weird. But we're trying to understand also the other side, and I hope my grandparents wouldn't be mad at me for yeah. trying to, yep. to understand because the guilt and the shame that the other side also had, and it wasn't their fault that their grandparents were living during that time, you know, that some other crazy reality was happening, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, I understand. Yeah, it's very totally get that. No, I totally get that because you know, on one side, like, I can hear my grandfather saying, "Like, why would you? Why? Why? In God's name, would you want to go back there? Like, why? There's no, there is no good reason." Um, but I also know, uh, and on a on the flip side, and I think similarly with with you both, that there's there's also pride though because they they would know that you your intention is so pure and you're thinking of the future. And I just, I think that um, there's a lot of pride. I think there would be a lot of pride there as well. So. And and I say that because I didn't go through whatever they went through. Yes. Yeah. 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 What happened. So I I completely respect that. And and, yes, of course. Yeah. From our circumstance and our reality, this is what we are trying to do. And there's always Mm -hmm. different, sides of the coin like even in totally. my grandmother wouldn't speak a word about it and uh, uh, she would say it pains me to even think about it she didn't share any of the stories my grandfather on the other hand was so happy to be alive was so joyful would tell any story mm-hmm. with and truly loved human beings even that. though he was mm-hmm. in the camps for 58 months so he was almost mm-hmm. there for five years and wow. and mm-hmm. he still had a joy of life and a joy of mm-hmm. humans and did not hold that grudge, whereas yeah. my grandmother did, you know? So it's such a, 
either so consciously or unconsciously, subconsciously, he chose that. Right. You know, and that's something we are fascinated by. That it seems that even in those circumstances, you can still somehow choose your reality. You know, and yeah, yeah, that's what we are trying to study. You know, I guess. Yeah. So absolutely. Uh, so one thing I want to ask you before we start to kind of wrap up our conversation with the two of you, at least this one, if not one in the future, I was curious to know uh, what is on the horizon for the two of you in addition to what we just spoke about? And also, do you have any um, insights or words of advice for those that might be fellow creatives themselves wanting to produce or create, uh, to direct, to curate? And what would you recommend for the upcoming generation? I'm gonna give that to you. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't wanna, I don't know. I'll give that one to you. She's very good at, like, she's very good at telling it, and then I just do one liners. That's yes. you know, our, hey, our, it's I good. can see, you're I can, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's why you're you're the yin to each other's yang, or yes, 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 yes. yeah, yes. Um, so we have that project. We are, of course, oh, constantly creating more music because that's something that bring we, so much joy to, to our hearts and souls. We also are working, it's it's interesting, a lot of the work that we're doing even for different organizations is related. Like we have a project, a documentary coming up that's better together where it's about mm -hmm. the Jewish communities and the African-American communities and the ways that they have historically supported each other and been better mm -hmm. together. Oh, wow. um, so again, like, and that's for a, a separate client. And, and then we have a project for some health and uh, a client who, again, wants to give people the tools to empower themselves in mind, body, spirit. So mm -hmm. even in, in the projects that we're working on in that respect, it's very aligned with, with the yeah, we're trying overall. To inspire and motivate. You know, I think that's yeah. uh, what we're trying to do with our film and music. Yeah. You know? And then as far as advice for people, I think the bottom line always, and I, as I say this, I need to also remind myself constantly <laughs> is follow your joy, follow your bliss. If things feel good, follow that. Mm. Do your best to yeah, try your God. let your heart mm. sing. And mm. I don't mean like sing per se, but mm -hmm. it's actually what I do. So awesome. But really mm -hmm. when it feels like joyful, follow that. And, and if it doesn't, then mm -hmm reevaluate something else yeah and shift it yeah and also the more you do the better it gets yes we 100%. we are lucky that we are workaholics and we like to just be <laughs> doing working work when we didn't have kids we work 16 hours a day yeah. you know right now we can't do that but the more wow. because we did so much and we didn't stop for years we've become much better you know right. we've grown so much in every in all of our skills we learned so many skills so it's just it's never too late to start and don't stop. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, yeah. That's and our amazing. actual dream project, which I feel like is like the perfect <laughs> button on this whole conversation. Yes. Harmonize, Put it out there. It is, it's, it's called Harmonize. And okay. it's a combination of music, film, and artists, organizations, human beings who are using their platform to harmonize humanity. So mm, love that. A bit of everything all in one. That's, we we need to use, yeah we want to use all of our skills combined together yeah, yeah. do you think um, do you think a podcast fun. could be a part of that wink wink nudge yeah. nudge I'm not, I'm not very good at winking <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> no it's always great to it, talk about it because the more you talk about it the more you can see, envision it you know and yeah. see it yes. and it helps you to yeah so great yeah. Yeah. we just we would just have to you know come to canada and follow you and he flies on the walls in your experience and <laughs> oh gosh that is well, extremely humbling i guess one of you could go to vernon to meet rachel one of you can come to vancouver to meet me or rachel, no i would just go down to vancouver but okay even better way less separate got, for me. yeah it's all good um actually <laughs> and just sort of a slight slight sort of superficial question in that realm have you guys been to canada yeah you've been you have yeah, okay that okay. was our first trip together actually yeah. was canada oh, really it was like a road trip it was more on the eastern i was gonna uh, say uh, it was in ontario where well, was probably place. there was a place where we, we we stayed that i've seen the most beautiful it was between sky that i've ever seen in my life mm. at night it was like you could see the galaxy it yeah was, it was amazing it was yeah it was in the mountains between Ottawa and Toronto, maybe? Ottawa and Toronto, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. 
Are you, you talking about the Northern Lights? Like Montreal, Ottawa. We did someplace else. We did the mountains. And then I left from Toronto, but you kept going. I was going to Stevens. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, wow. and Canada, yeah. I mean, we have great memories for yeah, sure. Yeah, like seven, seven years ago at this point. Wow. wow. Oh, wow. Well, well, you yeah, got to make it to the West Coast, mm-hmm. the yes. Vancouver side, because it's like, you think that's beautiful? Come, come to beautiful British Columbia. It's like just mountains and water, and oh my goodness, it's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We love well, that. We moved from the city to you know, outside the city, it's, it just feels so much better to be in nature, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. Definitely. Well, I, yeah, well, my husband and I actually, we were, we lived in a bigger city in Vancouver for our whole lives, essentially, and just moved to a much smaller town of like 42,000 people about five years ago, because we were just had it with the rat race. And, you know, when I do most of my things are um, remote, so it's fine with me and we're Perfect. able to buy a house, which is unheard of where you guys are <laughs> but it was actually it was unheard of where we were from too believe it or not it's really expensive in vancouver but anyway yeah yeah thank you yeah. <laughs> well no. i know it's getting late so um we really 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 appreciate this um so so, so blessed and happy to have met you too and can't wait to follow your journey continue to follow your journey and yeah, hopefully, maybe we'll get to meet in person one day. And yeah, all definitely. the best in Poland. Yes, um, travel safe, be projects. healthy. Yes. Thank, Thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Thank okay. You for having us. You're of so course. welcome. Okay, keep in touch. Yes. Okay. Bye, guys. Okay, <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. You oh, too. you too. Bye. Sleep yeah. well. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Juicy.